Hey friends, Dr. Dave here. What does an MMR vaccine have to do with the current COVID pandemic? Well, let's talk about that right now. So I'm getting a lot of calls at the clinic now for people wanting to get a booster in their MMR vaccine. Well, where did that come from? Let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, the MMR vaccine is a vaccine against measles, mumps, and rubella. This particular combination vaccine first came about in about 1971, and then around 1989 we started introducing a second dose of this vaccine. It's typically given in childhood, so the first dose is usually around 12 months, and then the second dose is usually around four years. Now, generally speaking, there are two different types of vaccines. First, there's inactivated vaccines, and these are basically chopped up pieces of protein that stimulate the body to make antibodies. The second type of vaccine is called a live attenuated vaccine. The MMR vaccine is that type of vaccine. Now, what does that mean? Well, here we have a virus. So to make a live attenuated virus, we basically alter the virus to remove its pathogenicity. In other words, we take away the things of the virus that cause symptoms and make you sick. So the virus is still a virus, it just won't make you sick. It is this live attenuated virus that goes into the vaccine that we then give to people. Once the vaccine is in, your immune system doesn't really care that the virus is attenuated or inert. It still recognizes it as foreign and it makes antibodies toward it. These antibodies then attack the virus. Now keep this mechanism in mind because we're gonna come back to this a little bit later to see if there's a part of this mechanism that may help us with the COVID pandemic. Now, this all sounds interesting, but why do we care? So as it turns out, scientists have made these very interesting observations regarding populations or groups of people who have gotten MMR vaccines later in life or who have recently gotten MMR vaccines. And those populations tend to do better during this COVID pandemic, meaning they have less rates of hospitalization and even less mortality. Let's take a look at a graph to help illustrate this. So this graph has two parts. The part on the right lists a few different countries and it lists their overall MMR vaccine coverage for the population. And as you see, as the list goes down, those countries have increasing rates or higher MMR coverage. Now on the left, you have those same countries and the overall mortality rate for COVID. And the interesting thing is that it follows the same pattern, although in reverse. So in other words, the higher the MMR coverage is for the population, the lower the COVID mortality tends to be. Furthermore, some countries have recently had a large national campaign to increase the MMR vaccination coverage for its citizens. Those countries tend to do better in terms of COVID mortality. Let's look at a few different examples. The first is in Hong Kong, where in 2019, Hong Kong initiated an MMR program that offered vaccination for everybody, but particularly for high-risk people like healthcare workers and airport staff and people like that. Now, Hong Kong has an incredibly dense population, so it is the prime territory for a virus like COVID to be rampant. However, the mortality rate in Hong Kong seems to be a lot lower than expected when compared to other similar countries. Next, let's talk about South Korea. South Korea typically immunizes its population a little bit later in life. And in fact, all military recruits are required to have an MMR vaccine. It should also be noted that it is required for all males to do a stint in the military. So therefore the overall population vaccination rate is high. Similarly there, there is a much lower hospitalization rate and a lower mortality rate compared to other countries. Lastly, we have Madagascar. And in 2019, the government underwent a huge program to vaccinate its citizens. So far, the mortality rate in Madagascar has been incredibly low compared to that of the rest of the world. Another population that seems to be doing better during this COVID pandemic are children. Let's take a look at one more graph to look at this more closely. So you see in this graph here that we have two main things going on. First of all, we have the horizontal lines going from left to right, and that basically shows COVID mortality that's broken up into decades of life. Interestingly, there seems to be a split before and after 50 years of age. So before 50 years of age, the mortality rate remains fairly low and also fairly stable. It doesn't change that much. But then if you look at the decades over 50 years old, the mortality rate starts to steadily increase. Now, honestly, there could be a lot of different reasons for that. But one observation is that it tends to correlate with 
MMR vaccinations. So if you think back to our first slide, we mentioned that MMR vaccination started in 1971. Well, that means that people in the population who are 49 years of age and younger should have had at least one MMR vaccine. People who are over 49 may not have had an MMR vaccine or immunity due to exposure. If we look back at our graph here, that correlates pretty nicely with what we are seeing. Those that have the lower mortality tend to be 49 years of age or younger. And then over age 50, which is where the population may not be as immunized with the MMR vaccine, we see the mortality rate start to increase. Now it's important to note that these are just observations, okay? So we really can't develop any strong causal conclusions from this, but good observations do raise questions. And in this case, the question is, does the MMR vaccine have some part in this relationship that we're seeing here? Let's look at a really interesting study that I found. So in this experiment, they took two groups of mice. Now, you remember the live attenuated vaccine that we talked about in the past? Well, they gave a live attenuated vaccine to half of the mice. Now, this was not the MMR vaccine. It was actually a live attenuated vaccine to a type of fungus. But regardless, they gave it to half the mice and then half the mice they didn't. They then exposed the mice to a lethal dose of pathogen. This was a mix of a fungus, but also had Staph aureus in it, which is a bacteria, which is something completely different than what that vaccine covered. Well, let's see how these poor little critters did. So here's a graph that basically shows the survival over 10 days after they got inoculated with this lethal dose. The folks at the top that did much better received the live attenuated vaccine. Whereas the folks who did not do so well, those did not receive the vaccine. So the really interesting thing here is that the vaccine that the mice got was against a fungus. What they got inoculated with was a high dose of Staph aureus, which is a bacteria, something completely different that the vaccine shouldn't have covered. So if the only effect of the vaccine was to give the mice antibodies to that fungus, it shouldn't have had any effect on the Staph aureus. But it did. Those mice still did better despite getting inoculated with something that the vaccine didn't cover. So the question here is, do these types of vaccines offer other benefits besides a specific antibody? So if you remember our nice lady here who got our live attenuated vaccine and made the antibodies to it, as it turns out, more cells get stimulated, such as these awesome cells that are called natural killer cells or NK cells, as well as another group of cells called myeloid-derived suppressor cells. There are other factors that happen as well, but all of these seem to be general immune suppressing factors. So in other words, they tend to suppress or blunt the strong immune or inflammatory response someone might get from an infection. So why might this be important? Let's look at the COVID-19 disease. Now, most of the very severe illness from COVID-19 doesn't come per se from the virus. It really comes from our body's strong immune response to the virus. So there's a large inflammatory state that happens. But let's look again at children. So children tend to do better with the COVID-19 virus. Now there's a lot about this virus that's similar to previous viruses that we have seen. There was a previous SARS outbreak in 2003 and then the MERS outbreak in 2012. Now, interestingly, children did better with those outbreaks as well. We saw a relatively low rate of hospitalization and mortality. Interestingly, those diseases behave the same way. The really severe illness came mainly from your body's inflammatory reaction or immune reaction to it. So we have three similar viruses that all create severe disease by causing these big inflammatory states. And in all three of those cases, children have tended to do better. Now, the theory of that is, is that children represent a population that have recently gotten a lot of vaccines, including live attenuated vaccines like MMR. So could these vaccines, though they're making antibodies specific to something completely different, could they still be giving a benefit from these anti-inflammatory cells that get boosted? Two key points to remember here. Number one, we are not suggesting at all that the MMR vaccine is a vaccine for COVID. And we are also not suggesting that this is a treatment for COVID. It's just an observation that people who have recently had the MMR vaccine tend to have better outcomes with COVID, perhaps from stimulating these anti-inflammatory mediators. Okay, now disclaimer time, okay? This video does not constitute your personal medical advice. If this is something you're interested in, I would encourage you to discuss this with your personal doctor. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, that explains why the MMR vaccine has gotten some recent attention in terms of potentially helping us out with this COVID pandemic. I hope you found this interesting and helpful. I found this topic interesting, and if you did like it, please hit the like button. I would also really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to putting out more content that I hope is timely and helpful. I hope everybody out there stays well, and please remember that kindness, that's always the best medicine. You guys take care.